Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a really interesting mini gaming PC that I picked up from AliExpress, known as the F9. Now, there's a few different manufacturers putting these out, but they're basically the same if you're talking about the specs we have with this one. Now, I've actually done a video on this about seven months ago, and this has kind of just been sitting around. And in that video, we did some Windows gaming on this unit. Now, this is actually powered by an Intel i7, and it's paired up with a dedicated Radeon GPU. And since my last video, there's been a lot of updates to Linux gaming. And I wanted to pull this out and install Steam Deck OS on it. Because recently, I've been experimenting with a lot of these smaller PCs, just trying to put something together that offers a nice console experience that isn't too large, something that could actually sit in the living room and at least game at 1080p. And that's exactly what we're doing here in this video. I wanted to see if we could get this up and running with Steam OS 3, otherwise known as the Steam Deck OS or Hollow ISO. That's the exact distro that I'm going to be using for this. And what I look for in these mini PCs is decent graphics performance, and really, when it comes down to it, at least at the time of making this video, I'm looking for Radeon graphics. It just works much better with SteamOS 3 right now. But there is support for NVIDIA GPUs and Intel iGPUs, but personally, I just haven't had much luck with it right now, so I always go for Radeon. And when it comes to the F9 mini PC, you can pick this up in a couple different configurations, but I have the higher end model here, and I picked up a bare bones unit. I've actually seen these as low as $380 but it's really the same as the Intel Hades Canyon. But this does offer better cooling performance, and it's a lot quieter than the Hades Canyon. So since I picked this up bare bones, I will have to add my own RAM and storage, and it's actually really easy to get inside of here. It uses SODIMM RAM and M.2 SSDs. You can use an NVMe in here. I'm also going to add a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi module. It's going to be an Intel AX module that I had laying around. But we've got two M.2 slots for SSDs, and this does support up to 64 gigabytes of SODIMM RAM running at 2400 megahertz, so I wish it was a bit faster. But I'm going to be adding an AX Intel Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card, just so we have some wireless on this unit. I'm going with a cheaper 1TB Kingston M.2 SSD, and I opted to use 16 gigabytes of DDR4. I'm using some Corsair Vengeance here running at 2400 megahertz. But once it's all said and done, it looks something like this. Very clean setup, super small form factor. It's even smaller than the Xbox Series S, which is a little hard to do when it comes to kind of a console experience nowadays. If you've taken a look at the PS5 and the Xbox One X, you know how large they can get. But with Steam Deck OS installed on this, it does offer a really nice console experience. And for being such a small form factor PC, we've got a lot of I.O. Up front here, USB Type-C, audio in, audio out, four USB 3.0 ports, and a full-size SD card reader. Moving around back, we've got our power input, four USB 2.0 ports, dual HDMI, dual mini display ports, and dual gigabit ethernet. So yeah, a lot of I.O. given how small this thing is. And real quick, on the bottom here, we do have these rubber feet that kind of brings it up off of the table or your desk, and all of the air is going to be pulled in from the bottom and pushed out from the rear. And when it comes to the specs here, we've got kind of an oddball setup. I know a lot of people weren't really into the Hades Canyon performance, but I personally liked it for what it was. And this is basically set up the same way. So for that CPU, we've got the Intel i7-8809G. Four cores, eight threads, a base clock of 3.2 gigahertz with a boost up to 4.2. I've added 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 2400 megahertz. And for the graphics, We've got the Radeon RX Vega MGH. Now, this was the time where AMD and Intel partnered up on a chip. That's the i7-8809G. This is built into the same die. We've got 24 CUs and 4 gigabytes of dedicated HBM2 video memory. And it is a very odd chip. This really only showed up in Hades Canyon. And I think what happened was they had some of these dies left and they sold them to different manufacturers and they started building these little PCs and selling them for relatively cheap when you compare it to other stuff on the market right now. Or you could set something like this up with a Hades Canyon that you picked up used on eBay. But let's go ahead and see if it would be worth doing in the first place. So I've got SteamOS 3 installed on that M.2 SSD. And everything seems to be working really well so far. I was actually surprised I didn't need to do much tweaking at all. I just installed Hollow ISO. If you're interested in doing it, I've got a full tutorial. Link for that is in the description. For my controller, I'm using the Gillikit Pro. It's connected over Bluetooth, but you could always use a PS3, PS4, PS5, or an Xbox controller with something like this. Let's head over to the settings real quick, and I'll show you. We've got that Intel i7. Not too much about the GPU, but it does state that we have 4GB of VRAM, and this is HBM2. 
But yeah, everything's working really well so far. I do have system-wide FSR. Now with these chips here, we can't change the TDP or the clock from the uh, Steam Deck menu when I pull it up in a second. But we are set at the maximum that we can go with the CPU and the GPU, and that's exactly what we want. I'm not looking to save any battery life because we're plugged into the wall. But we can bring the menu up here, and I can turn on my performance overlay. So we've got all that information over there, but unfortunately it's not showing me the wattage on the CPU. Unfortunately, I just couldn't get that to display in the overlay, but from the BIOS on this little PC, we can actually set the TDP. It's set at 45 watts right now with a boost up to 65. But yeah, with a setup like this, it's really great for a big screen TV. I've got all of my games listed here. We can access the store. I can also set up different applications like emulators and launch them directly from here. I've just set up a few. But I've got more installed, and I can access them from desktop mode, or I can manually add them here, or add something like EMU DAC. But that's another thing this has going for it, desktop mode. So if we head to the power menu, we can switch right over there, and you can get some work done on a little PC like this running this Linux operating system. And we will test out some emulation by the end of the video, but the main reason I wanted to put something like this together was kind of couch gaming. That way we had a nice little interface in game mode, so I'm going to go ahead and switch back over there, and we'll get right into some testing. With the latest updates to SteamOS 3, we can actually change the resolution and go much higher. If I was to just launch one of these games without any configuration, it would go straight to 720p or 1280 by 800, depending on the aspect ratio of the display I have connected. But if we head over here to Injustice 2, we can go down to Properties, and we can set the main resolution. So this is actually set to 1440p, but I'm pretty sure we're not going to be able to run it at 1440p. We'll just go to 1080 with it but it's totally possible to even go up to 4K if you have a much powerful system. All right, so here's Injustice 2 at 1080p high, and I do see some dips under 60. So with this, I would suggest taking some of the settings down to medium, and I kind of suspect this with the GPU we have here. I mean, it's not horrible, and you know, I really haven't seen it go under 55, but there are dips, and with a fighting game like this, you kind of want to keep it really steady. Another thing you could do is take this down to 900p and turn on system-wide FSR. Here's The Witcher 3 at 1080p with high medium settings. With everything set to high, I did see some major dips every once in a while, so I did take a few of them down to medium. And by the way, I do have hair works completely off, but like this, it's definitely a really playable experience. Personally, I still think it looks absolutely beautiful like this, but just like everything we're going to take a look at in this video, we have the option of system-wide FSR. So a lot of this stuff can just be taken down to 900p high settings with FSR on, and you'll still have a really good experience here. Take it easy. Alright, so I've just switched over to my game capture device. Here we have Doom Eternal, 1080p, medium settings. Got all the information up in the top right hand corner. We also have that Steam Deck overlay going. We're getting an average of around 64 FPS like this. And to tell you the truth, I thought we'd have to take this down to low, especially given that we're running at 1080p. Remember, we've only got 24 compute units with this GPU here, but it is handling the game pretty well. Wanted to test at least one more fighting game, so I went with Marvel vs. Capcom 3, 1080p, maxed out. Looking really good here, we're running at a really steady 60. Now when there's lots of particles on screen, or when you start a special move, you'll see it dip down a bit. But overall, again, really nice performance here, and the fighting game should run fairly well on this setup. All right, so when it comes to Cyberpunk 2077, it never fails to impress on Linux. Um, I've just had really good luck with Radeon GPUs and this game in Linux. We're at 1080p medium settings. I actually have a few of the settings turned up from the Steam Deck setting. FSR set to quality in the game, not system wide, and we can get an average of 75 FPS out of this game. Really great performance given what we're working with here.
I know it's an old one, but it's still a game I personally like to play, especially the Rallycross stuff. Project Cars 2, 1080p, high settings, perfectly playable, and with these racing games, I really do like turning V-Sync on, but we've got it unlocked here. We can get an average of 78 FPS. Elden Ring is one of those games that gives older hardware a run for its money. Right now we're at 900p low with system-wide FSR turned on, and we can't quite hit a steady 60. I really didn't think we would. And even at 720p, we see a dip under 60 FPS. I mean, it really felt kind of the same at 900p with FSR on or just 720p. So it does a pretty decent job with PC gaming, and it even handles emulation quite well. Here's the Dolphin emulator. We're running a Wii game here at 1080p, full speed, and uh, yeah, we can go up higher. We can go up to 1440 with this, but my monitor and game capture was already set to 1080p. Not a problem to run your GameCube and Wii games on this system. So in the end, yeah, I do think that something like this could be a viable option if you know what you're getting into. This is far from a 4K gaming machine. I didn't expect it to do much of anything at 1440p. But when it comes to 1080p gaming and emulation, this is a solid little system. If you can pick these up cheap enough and you're looking to build a small form factor Steam OS 3 or Steam Deck OS powered Steam machine for the living room, then yeah, this could be a really good option. But keep in mind, you can always build a desktop PC with a better Radeon GPU and install this same operating system. You're not going to get this kind of form factor, but you will get more power for around the same price. And if you use used parts, you might even be able to get out cheaper. So it really comes down to user preference. If you like the performance you saw out of this machine in this video, then yeah, it might be worth it to you. If not, I would think about building something else. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. I'll leave some links in the description in case you're interested in learning more about this and the Hades Canyon. You can pick them up used on eBay for a pretty decent deal nowadays. If there's anything else you want to see running on this, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.